Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Dino Dig. Dino Dig is for two to five players and takes about 25 minutes to play. It's for ages eight and up, and in the game, you're basically going to be getting a five by five grid of tiles. You'll also get a character and your own set of cards in your hand that you're gonna be utilizing. There's three actions you can take on your turn, and you'll have to take two actions a turn. You can dig to try and gather fossils, you can attempt to move across the area, and you can play your cards in your hand. You're gonna only have a certain amount of cards, and once you use those cards, they're going to be removed from the game. The objective of the game is to get as many sets as possible, which will give you points at the end of the game, and you want to try and avoid getting scorpions. After a certain amount of piles have been removed, based on the number of players in the game, the game will end and everybody will get to take one turn except the person who ended it, and then you'll tally up your points. Whoever has the most points is the winner of Dino Dig. All right, let me show you the game. So here we have Dino Dig and everything included for a five player game. You're gonna be getting a bunch of these tile cards you're gonna be putting down in a five by five square and there's going to be three tiles high. There's three different types of tiles. You're gonna have the basic flat land here, you're gonna have these you know, couple bones and then you're gonna have the big rocks. And each of them is going to have more or less scorpions and bones and then uh, full scale dinosaurs that you're gonna be trying to pull up. And you're going to be then having a character as well as six item cards. Wheelbarrow, gloves, boots, workers, dirt devil, and scanner. The game will also come with a rule book, the box, uh, these empty spaces they are going to be placing down. And based on the number of players is how many of these are going to be needed to end the game. And of course, a game over marker, which indicates that everybody's going to get that last turn. And your little meeple. That's pretty much how you set the game up for any number of players, along with all the cards you're beginning in the game Dino Dig. Let me go ahead and show you down below how to play the game with two or three players a couple turns and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. So let's go ahead and begin we'll play with three players that means we'll remove blue and green and we'll just be playing with yellow red and orange here or pink that's what I have to work with. Uh, placing the meeples down anywhere you want on the board to begin the game all the different players are going to go ahead and do this in turn order and then they're going to get their stack of cards they'll be able to use in their hand. Uh, there's going to be two turns per player in each turn uh, two actions per player in each turn and it's pretty simple. I told you already before this. There's going to be uh, moving, there's going to be digging, and there's going to be playing these action cards. Whenever you play a scanner, it'll let you peek at the top three uh, cards of a specific tile stack. Gloves will let you switch place with another player, something like that. Boots is going to let you move four spaces as opposed to one for an action. The worker will let you dig any dig site without moving, so you can be like, I want that. We are barrel will let you move, to any, uh, move any two top tiles. Uh, anywhere and then the dirt devil will swap a tile with another player which is pretty good as well and you're going to certainly start playing so we'll go ahead and start with yellow here and yellow will go ahead and start by digging and this is usually going to be a good one however it could be scorpions and scorpions give you minus points and i got a tyrannosaurus rex uh, piece which is three seven and twelve when i get all three i'll get 12 points in the game if i just get the this one here it's worth three and i have one more action i can choose to dig here which means there's less good stuff here or i can simply move here and dig on my next turn. We'll go ahead and dig here one more time, why not? And I got another Tyrannosaurus Rex piece. That's of course the same piece, so it's not going to count towards the set, but it'll be worth three points at the end of the game. And then we're going to go ahead and have a red over here, and he's going to go ahead and start by digging here, and that's going to give him something interesting. I think it's a Brontosaurus. And uh, he's going to then go ahead and move over here. And then orange and or pink is going to go ahead and just dig and ooh, got something nice there. And we'll do one more dig and another something nice there. And uh, then it's just gonna simply continue going around in circles. Uh, if you want, as an action, you can play one of these like I said before. So for instance, we'll go ahead and have him dig at a site without having to be there. And he gets this, not too shabby. And then he can go ahead and choose to dig here. And another good one, not too shabby as well. Whenever there's going to be a pile that is empty, you're gonna go ahead and place this there. And that references the fact that the game is one closer to ending. In a two and three player game, you're just gonna have five of these total. And then with more players comes uh, more of these empty spaces you'll be utilizing, which means there's gonna be more traversing around the board. Uh, and so the next player is going to then get to go. We'll go ahead and see about some other stuff that we can do here. Let's go ahead and swap a tile with another player. So we'll go ahead and play this one here for red. And uh, you could, in, if you want, swap a tile with another player. I think it's like that, or it's move spaces to another tile. Let me see. Let me make sure. Swap a tile. Uh, dig, move, switch places. Okay, yeah, you would swap a tile then. So that's how it would look. I just don't want to be wrong here. And then he could go ahead and dig here if he wanted to. 
We've got something interesting there. And uh, that would be his two actions. And then it would move to the next player and the game would continue. I'll show you all the different cards as to how they function. Switch places with another player. That's the one I already sh showed you before. Moving four spaces. It's pretty good going around the board. Peeking at the top three tiles, you can look at all three tiles and then putting them back down. Uh, and then there's the wheelbarrow, which you move any top two tiles and dig any dig site without moving, which is pretty good. If you want to dig here, you can just dig here. And uh, that's pretty much what you can do in the game. The game's going to end when the last of these is placed based on the number of players, in which case every other player who didn't end the game will get one more turn. And then you're gonna score. And you're gonna look at uh, what you have here. So let's go ahead and give players some random stuff and uh, we'll go ahead and score the game up just so you get a good idea. There's bones that usually give you an action of some sort that'd be worth one point a piece. And then you're also gonna look and see all your set pieces. So here's a set and there are two different ones. So that's six points, making it seven. He's got a scorpion, which is minus two unless he has the most. And then he's got this for four. This player here, does he have any scorpions? He doesn't, and this guy doesn't either. So if you have the most scorpions, it's worth five points in the game. So that's actually really good. Here's a bone for one. And then we got this one here that makes you, gives you nine. Uh, these both give you three a piece and these both give you three as well. And then this guy here, he's got, looks like all different things. Now here's one, he's got five points for these two. And then he's got two, three, and four. And then you add them up and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner of the game, Dino Dig. All right, let's come up and play, talk about it. So that's the game Dino Dig and it plays the same for two to five players. Uh, the art, which there is a little bit of, is fine. It's a kid game. It's a family friendly style game and uh, it functions very well. I like it tactically and strategically. There's certain things you can choose to do trying to end the game early or prolong it as best as you possibly can. You can use the wheelbarrow to move pieces onto uh, empty spaces to try and stop the game from ending if you're slowing down and you don't have enough points. There's also those scorpion cards where you want to have the most or none at all because you're going to take point loss at the end of the game if you have them and you don't have the most. There's also the bones that give you those different actions you can take uh, when you pull them up and they're also worth points in the game as well. It's a fun game. It's a very, very simple game, but it has a a lot of replayability and enjoyability based on what you're trying to do, which is gather dinosaur bones and collect sets. The more, the merrier, and of course, you want to be careful when you choose to pull and where you cho choose to pull from. In a two-player game, there's one little flaw that I didn't like, and that's when you play a card, it's typical that the person across from you is also going to play that card. So if I want to switch places with you, uh, then you're going to be going and probably switching places back, utilizing the cards like that. But it doesn't happen in a three, four, or five-player game as much. And there's still tactical aspects of the game in a two-player game. Now, of course, I prefer playing with more players. Three, four, and five work just fine with this game, and it has a lot of replayability in the nature of what it is. It's a kid game in which you'll be pulling stuff from the field, trying to gather your best dinosaur bones you possibly can. It's got a little bit of like this historical aspect to it, a little bit of science, which shows you how the bones are made. And overall, it's just fun. You feel like you're an archaeologist, and you feel like you're digging for bones and for dinosaur bones, and uh, you're just having this really quick spurt in time of doing this little fun and engaging act Activity. Uh, it's definitely going to be one of those games that I think family members are going to enjoy playing. Kids, uh, you know, husband, wife, daughter, baby, all that. Maybe, you know, not maybe baby, but like, you know, eight years old is easily going to be able to play this game. It's very, very simple, but it has a lot going for it. It's a lot of fun. I played this multiple times just to get the gist of it between all the different player counts, and I've enjoyed it every single time. It's definitely one of those games where people ask me if they want to play it or want to try it out. I'll be like, yeah, let's go ahead and check it out. Now, is it a super intense, thick, deep game? No, it's not. And if you're looking for something like that, you're probably not going to find it here. But if you like a quick, enjoyable, family-friendly dinosaur building game, you're going to enjoy Dino Dig. Definitely check it out down below in the description, Dino Dig, if it sounds like something that you'd be interested in. All right guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as taking a look at Dino Dig. It's a fun little game. Definitely something if you've got a family that you're going to want to jump into playing with people for a gateway game. As well as taking a look at my site, unfilteredgamer.com. We have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And uh, four or five giveaways going on right now. So definitely want to get on board that before it's too late. Vindication, uh, Wingspan, a few of ton of great games to take a look at, as well as taking a look at my friends, everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek. And don't forget to give my friend uh, Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker, a subscribe as well. We do greatly appreciate everything you guys do for us. Uh, this is our new studio set, which we've been showing a couple times now. Please go ahead and let us know in the poll, but if it seems like something you are interested in, if you like the old one, if you like the new one, whatever is good. And as always, guys, we look forward to uh, digging for dinos with you next time.